What's going on everyone? Gilman with Live Wealthy Stocks back with another video today taking a look at a stock that rallied this past week. We'll take a look at Solo today. I know I haven't covered it in a while, um, but I do still follow the stock very closely. I own it. I own some shares. Um, so we'll take a look at how it traded, the recent news that really caused it to push up this week what that means for the stock pushing forward. I'll also share a way that I'm playing the stock. Um, if you would like to you know, do the same, I like to share my strategies and kind of see what you guys like down in the comment section. So I'll do all that, but if you could hit that like button down below, subscribe to my channel if you are new, I really, really appreciate each and every one of you guys. So wasting no time, let me hit record and we will get right into it. Um, what we saw this past week, right, if I go to a five day chart is we started the week kind of in the 660s, pushed up, hitting all the way kind of the nines, the low nines, um, before kind of calming down and selling off as the overall market also sold off kind of the second half of this past week, especially Friday, right? So let's take a look at what really caused that push up, take a look at future levels of support and resistance, and then we'll kind of see if we could, you know, maybe see a little bit of uh, a few, or we could see what the future of the stock could look like. So let me go over here for us. First things first, um, the reason that, you know, solo stock really pushed up nicely this past week is due to the idea that, or the, the news that they are expanding. Um, they're doing their drive tour marketing and ad campaign to five cities in Arizona, California, and Oregon. These events are scheduled to take place in February and March and will include test drive experiences and first look opportunities. Now, I know that a lot of people, right, don't think solo is going to be successful. And I am a little bit hesitant as well, not gonna lie, not gonna you know, lie to you and say, no, I think it's gonna be really successful and people are gonna buy this, right? It is a one person car, right? A three wheeled one person car. Um, so it's a little bit of a hard sell in my opinion, right? I definitely think there's a market for it. But um, again, I think these upcoming months are great for the stock because as they go into these cities, right? We'll get more of an understanding of are people actually interested in this car? Are people placing pre-orders? Are people placing orders? What do those numbers look like? Currently, they have 10 retail locations um, to you know engage customers and educate cities about the solo EV. Um, and then you know what this this uh, this um, there's I mean there's another person from Investor Place talking about the the there being a location in san diego and every time they've passed that pop-up location since it's been very busy um and they're saying that it's true for the company's retail stores in los angeles and phoenix as well so that's great news for the stock right because if they can get people's interest right they had some uh stat on their website saying hey a majority of the people that commute commute on a daily basis commute alone commute less than you know x number of miles and our solo car really fits that the question becomes, do people really want to spend, I think it's like eighteen to $20,000 on a car that can't fit another person, that can't really lug around even your, your weekly big grocery haul, right? That's the big question, and I think that these upcoming months will be really great for the stock um, in terms of, or not necessarily great for the stock, but really great for us to kind of get an understanding of that. I definitely think that there's upside. That being said, as this article mentions, um, you know, it'll, it's a riskier bet than Tesla, but they are targeting a specific transportation problem and they are going, they are working with kind of the electrification of, of cars that are on the road, right? The other thing is, you know, they're, they're talking about um, their, their further, uh, their ad campaign, right? As I said, these additions will take the company's total retail location count to 13 across 10 major markets. These are some of them. And you know, we, lot, this article talks a lot about kind of their, their retail footprint, what they're looking at and, and moving into the future, what they are looking to do. As you know, the, both of these articles mentioned, there is a lot of interest in the solo car, which is great news for you know, the company and the stock. Now the question becomes, do those people actually place orders and do we get sales out of that? So let me share with you guys kind of on the daily chart what I see. We will also take a look at you know, what we um, fine here. So as we can see, um, the, the one thing that I don't like from this past week is the fact that we had one green candle followed by three red candles, but 
I personally think that that's due to a lot of bag holders, as you can see here, you know, solo rallied from two, kind of the, the twos to all the way to 13 between 11.4 and 11.20. That's 16 days, not 16 trading days, that's 16 total days where the stock kind of 6 x in value. So someone who's in, you know, it around here, right, was holding it, hoping to get out if they weren't able to get out here. So I think we do have a lot of bag holders, but once that kind of clears, hopefully we see you know, another kind of steady push up. So these are levels that I had identified in my previous videos and they kind of held up really nicely, right? We saw stock pushing down, 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 and then up here. And then finally we saw a breakout there um, due to the news that we got. But what do we have coming up in levels of, in terms of future support and resistance level? And then I'll share with you guys the trade that I kind of have right now. Um, so here at the bottom, right, we've, we had two sort of levels of resistance and support. The first one being this level here in the seven in the high sevens, which as you can see Thursday, we were kind of hovering around. We were above it, we were below it, um, and it was acting as a really nice pivot point where the stock kind of hung out. Friday, we broke below it and we pushed towards this 740s level, bounced off of it towards the end of the day. So on the upside, right, that's the first level that I'm watching is this 798. Uh, to see if we could, you know, make another push towards it, get above it, and then use that as a solid base before pushing right back up. My goal would be kind of these recent highs, hopefully in the next couple of weeks. On the downside though, right, we've got the 755 level, um, which is not too far, or excuse me, not the 755 level, this seven kind of um, 40s level, which is not too far from our 755 closing price as of Friday, January 15th. So if we see more of a sell-off, then I could see us going all the way down to the 21 EMA, which is at 720. If we don't stop there, then the 34 EMA at 690. So the question becomes, you know, what, actually, let me let me kind of, kind of recapture that and then we'll kind of go into what I'm doing with the trade. So my goal would be for the stock to kind of stay above this 8 EMA. If it does, if it opens above the 8 EMA, which is at 757, bounces off the 8 EMA, I think that, you know, this might be a good spot to get in, assuming it can hold both of these levels and start to push towards the 798 level. If it breaks down though, I'm waiting until the 21 EMA right at 720s before making um, you know any additional entries to my position. So let me share my position with you guys um, and then I'll, I'll share you know why I am, I'm playing what I'm playing. So I do own shares in solo. I've continued to own shares in solo. They they were profitable um, here, right? I think my, my, my Current price is 780s, um, so I'm a little bit down on that trade right now. But what I did was I actually sold a cash secured put, which instead of buying 100 shares, what you could do is you, if you have, let's say right now to buy 100 shares, you need $755 in your account to buy 100 shares. You just, you know, normal um, buy to open 100 shares, you know, done, easy nothing too crazy there. What I did was I sold a $6 put, which basically means that if the stock goes below $6, right? Someone who holds that $6 put, meaning they bought the $6 put, can exercise their option and sell their shares to me, and I have to buy them at $6, no matter what Solo's price is at that point, right? So let's say Solo's trading at, if solo is trading above six, right, this person should not exercise, probably won't exercise, right? Why would you want to sell your shares for six dollars if you could sell them for seven, seven fifty-five in this case? But if solo is trading at five fifty-five, I essentially still have to buy solo shares at six dollars. Why did I sell this at six? I think for me, six dollars is the price where I would definitely, definitely, definitely be buying more shares. And so, what this cash secured put allowed me to do is I got a dollar 37 in credit, meaning to give someone the right to buy solo, or the right to give me their shares for $6, right? I got $137, a dollar 37 means $137. If, if solo goes below six, I get 100 shares of solo for $600, but my cost for solo would actually be $4.63 a share because I got $137 for selling this option in the first place. So hopefully that isn't confusing to a lot of you, but if it is, you know, drop it down in the comment section and I'd love to explain it to you further. 
So if Solo goes below six, I buy 100 shares of Solo at $6, and I, and I get to kind of keep this $137 that I got. So my cost on Solo, if Solo is below $6, no matter what, will be $4.63. So if Solo is above $4.63, I am making money if solo falls, if solo just tanks and falls below $4.63 in the next month, right? This ex, this uh, option goes all the way down to February 19th. Then I'm still on the hook. My average cost will still be $4.63. So as, if it's above $4.63, I'm making money. If it's below $4.63, I'm losing money because I'm still buying it for $600 and I got $137. So my cost is $4.63. Now, the other thing I could do, I bought this when, you know, the this, this share was probably down here in the low sixes, right? I could just sell this option, which is now trading at 43 cents, excuse me, buy this option, right? Because I sold this put. I could just buy this put back for 43 cents and I, I can make $94, which is 68% return on my money. I could just do that, close it out, not have to worry about buying solo shares from anyone, right? So this is called a cash secured put where you could sell a put, meaning, you know, usually, I know you guys have probably bought and bought calls and bought puts, which if you buy a put and the price of the option goes down, your put goes up. This is the opposite, right? You're taking the other side, you're giving someone the right to buy solo for you, from you, or sell their solo to you, excuse me, they're, they can sell their solo stock, 100 shares, at $6. Whether Solo's trading at $5.80 and they sell it to you for six, or if it's trading at $4.80 and they sell it to you for six, they can sell it to you for six, and someone is paying $1.37 to have the right to be able to do that. The reason I like this, like I said, I, I've done this for a couple plays, is if I think, if I wanna buy the stock at $6, might as well lower my cost basis by doing this because worst case, the stock falls below $6, I get assigned the 100 shares and I get to keep this $137. Best case, I never had to actually buy solo shares and I get to make $137. The where you lose though, right, if, is if a stock tanks, if it goes way below $6, more than the premium that you got per share for selling this put. So I hope that wasn't too confusing. I'm not saying this is a quick and easy way to make money. I'm just sharing a different strategy. If you do wanna buy a stock anyway, and you have the money to buy 100 shares of it, this is a different way you can play it, still make money, um, and still kind of come out with a similar or better outcome than you would have if you had just bought shares. So hope you guys found this video helpful. If you did, drop a like and subscribe to my channel. Again, if any questions arise to this cash secured put, drop it down in the comment section and I'd love to chat with you guys down there. Um, until next time, you know, if you have any questions, again, comment down below. Um, let's remember to be a bit better every single day and until next time.